Easter devotions as we consider another event that happened as Jesus had, after Jesus had risen from the dead and the thoughts that go with that. We pick up where we left off yesterday with the couple on the Emmaus Road and how they recognised Jesus and ran back to Jerusalem, the seven miles. It was dark and they, and they went and they found where the disciples were. And it says in John chapter 20, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace to you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. This story is also recorded in Luke chapter 24. And um, it makes it clear that the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. Fear of the Jews, mind you, not fear of the Romans. You see, the disciples had understood who it was that had insisted that Jesus die. There had been times when the Romans, Pilate particularly, had tried to release Jesus. But the religious leaders of the day were determined that he should die. These were the religious leaders who, whose responsibility it was to explain to the people about God, about what was important to God, about how they should live their lives for God. And actually, they had become so disconnected from the God of the Old Testament and what was important to the God of the Old Testament that they did not recognise this very God when he turned up in human form. And they opposed him and they insisted that he die. So they were using God's name and misrepresenting who he was and what he was like. They were taking his name in vain. And now the disciples are hiding behind locked doors for fear of them. Two things came to my uh, attention as I, as I read this passage. And the first was that Jesus had definitely died. There was no doubt in the disciples' minds that Jesus had died on Friday when they'd seen him executed or when he'd been executed. You know, there was no way that they were saying, oh, you made it through the execution. Wondered if you might have done. Well done. They knew he was dead. And so for them to see something that, looked like Jesus, they feared he was a ghost, that's what it says in Luke, or some kind of apparition. And so Jesus gave them the proof that they needed. They were allowed to touch him. They could see the wounds in the side to prove that it was Jesus. And he took something to eat. He took some fish to prove that he was really alive. So he'd definitely been dead, definitely alive and I love the bit where it says he came and he stood among them stood in their midst is another uh, translation you know they had been scattered they'd been disorientated they'd been lost and now Jesus came and stood in the center of their lives again physically but also metaphorically they were able to recenter their lives on Jesus. So to this group of people that had had their world devastated, because they'd left everything to follow Jesus, they'd left family, income, locality, all their hopes and dreams had been focused on Jesus. And then there was the devastation of him being killed. And then the confusion of today for them. You know, there'd been reports from the women early in the morning that they'd seen Jesus, but maybe, maybe it was dark. Maybe, maybe they didn't see clearly. 
And the Mary had said she'd seen the Lord. Well, you know, Mary can get a bit hysterical. You know, she did have seven demons in her at one point. Who knows what lasting impact that could have had. Can we really trust what she said? Actually, can we trust what the women said? And then Peter has seen Jesus at some point, but he was so broken after what happened to him. And he's not talking very much about what Jesus said. But now Cleopas has turned up with his friend. And they've had an extended conversation with Jesus. And now Jesus is here. And it's not just a ghost. And he's really here. And this is amazing and confusing. And what does Jesus say to them? He says, peace to you. Greek words erene, it's the word, the Hebrew word shalom, and it is such a big word for five letters. Such a big word. It's it's so much more than just the absence of conflict and strife. It's about bringing completeness and wholeness and restoration. It's about well-being. And Jesus says to his disciples, peace to you. True peace is about taking what is broken and restoring it to complete wholeness. And that's what Jesus was doing with his disciples here. And he says to them, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. He's commissioning them. This shalom, this completeness, this wholeness isn't just for them to keep to themselves. These disciples who were cowering behind locked doors because of the Jews are being made whole and being given a purpose and sent out. And Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth, the spirit that will guide them into all truth. The one that is also called the comforter. Because as Jesus is commissioning them, he's also empowering them. Because he hasn't left them to do the job on their own. The Holy Spirit is to come and to help and to empower them. So I wonder, what will you ponder today? Am I guilty of misrepresenting God and his character to others by my words or how I behave? Because as a follower of Jesus, I carry his name. Do I need to recenter my life, put Jesus back in the most important place? Because it's so easy to allow other things to crowd him out. Do I need to be filled afresh with shalom from God to restore what was broken? Jesus never promised us ease, but he promised to never leave us. And by his spirit, he will always be with us. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father for the shalom that you brought to the disciples at this difficult time. And thank you that this same shalom is available to us now. We ask that by your Holy Spirit you would fill us again with yourself. That we also can be sent out as you sent out your disciples. Unfortunately for Thomas, he wasn't with the group when Jesus had turned up. And tomorrow, we're going to consider him.